Welcome to the Ball Color Link Cut Flower Series. Today we'll be talking about cut flower zinnias. Zinnias are a tender annual that are easy to grow from seed, either starting your own plugs or sowing them direct in the field. Plugs are available from the commercial growers, but not usually recommended because the growers will not accept any claims for damage during shipping. Zinnia seedlings are fragile and they will get damaged when they're shipped in a box by FedEx and UPS. The germination temperature is about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, so you want to be careful you don't direct sow too early in the spring. You need to wait till the soil has warmed. Zinnias need to be planted in full sun. And it takes about four weeks from sowing until your plugs are ready to transplant into the field. It's recommended that you succession plant every three to four weeks until late July, so you have a continuous supply of fresh flowers all season. Plant spacing is about nine inches or two plants per square foot. Beds are usually three feet wide. It's important to not let the plants get root bound in the plug tray, because if the plants are stressed at a young age, they'll end up having a lot of single flowers instead of the double flowers. Zinnias are heavy feeders and do best in fertile soil, and it's good to use a balanced fertilizer like 555 or 101010, both when you're planting and again about halfway through the season. You want to make sure the leaves stay nice and green like the photo. It's important to use irrigation on your zinnias. While the plants don't mind the hot summer temperatures, they do not like a drought. Uh, if grown on dry, conditions, your plants will be stunted, flowers small, and they won't produce much. So it's very important to have irrigation available to water your plants. Support netting is optional. Some growers use it, some don't. If you do use it, you want to have it about 18 inches above the soil, secured very tight, and then to hold the plants up. Then it's going to be pinched or not pinched. If you do want to pinch them, pinch them when they're about 8 to 10 inches tall. And if you're not sure if you want to pinch your zinnias, I recommend planting a bed and then pinch half of them and the other half leave unpinched and see which works better for your situation on your farm. Zinnias are tender plants that will not survive any frost or freeze, so be careful you don't plant them too early in the spring. And when that first frost comes in the fall, your season will be over. When harvesting zinnias, you want to cut nice long stems even if that means cutting and losing a couple side branches, you then want to strip those side branches any leaves so you just have the stem and the flower. By cutting nice long stems, the plant will grow back with more long stems. If you pick short six inch stems, all you'll get is short six inch stems the rest of the season. Be sure to use clean buckets and clean water. A chlorine tablet can help keep the water clean. The CVBN tabs from Chrysal are a chlorine tablet that a lot of growers use in their buckets of water when they're harvesting. It's important that the flowers are fully formed when you harvest them. If you pick them too soon, the vase life will be reduced and the stems will often bend and break. Some growers use what they call the wiggle test, where they gently shake the stem and the flower stem should not bend back and forth or wiggle at all. It should be nice and stiff, almost as stiff as a pencil. If it's stiff, it's ready to pick. If it's wiggles, wait another day or two. It's really important to know that zinnia flowers do not go in the cooler. If you put flowers in the cooler at 35 to 38 degrees, they'll turn brown and go bad. It's important that you want to harvest zinnias usually the day before you need to use them or sell them and then store them in an air conditioned room overnight. Because zinnias don't work in a cooler, they're usually not available at the wholesaler and they do not go through the wholesale chain of shipped flowers. So they're really good flower to grow for your local market, whether it's farmer's markets, uh, event designers, or the local florist. Zinnia plants are very productive and will branch out and rebloom about two weeks after you harvest them. And they usually give you three to four good flushes of flowers before they start to decline. So if you have succession planted every three to four weeks, your next planting will be getting ready or will be ready just as your first planting is going bad. When your planting has declined and stopped producing good flowers, go ahead and mow it down and move on to the next planting for your next harvest. 
Some cut flower zinnia varieties to grow. The most common one that most cut flower growers use is Benari Giant. They're really nice tall plants with large flowers that were bred specifically for cut flowers. It also comes in I think 12 or 13 different color options. Then there's Queen or Queenie. It's the same flower. It just depends what seed company. Sometimes they call them different names, either Queen or Queenie. Um, it's a flower is a little bit smaller than the Benary Giant, but it's an interesting muted soft pastel type colors. Then you have Oklahoma, which is a medium sized flower, but very productive. The plants branch very well. It's a great variety to use for mixed bouquets. Then Uproar Rose is very similar to the Benary Giant. It comes from a different seed producer. Uh, Cut and Come Again is a much smaller flowers, but again, very productive. And it's very good to use these in mixed bouquets. It's also small enough to use for a boutonniere if you're doing wedding work. When you're picking your zinnia varieties and buying your seed, it's really important to pick tall cut flower varieties. There are lots of zinnia varieties that the picture may look the same. The flower is just as big as the cut flower variety, but the plant's only 12 inches tall. You want to make sure you don't buy those and grow those thinking you're going to get good cut flowers out of them because they'll be too short. Like all cut flower varieties, zinnias do have a few pest problems. Japanese beetles would damage the foliage and occasionally the flowers. This map shows where the Japanese beetles are and they're slowly working their way across the country and up into Canada. It's usually in mid to early June that you'll get a two or three weeks where they're uh, active and eating on your plants and then they go away and die off. Uh, they do lay their eggs in August, so if you have a dry August, you'll have fewer Japanese beetles the following year because their eggs don't survive in the soil when they're laid. Zinnias occasionally will get aphids and spider mites. That's usually not uh, very often and you usually don't have to worry about it. Uh, some good rainstorms will get rid of the aphids and the spider mites. There's three main diseases that will affect your zinnia plants. Alternaria blight uh, causes little round, light colored spots with a dark circle around it. This is actually a seed borne disease that doesn't happen very often. Uh, if you do have it, uh, it's recommended just to get rid of the plants. The anthominus is brown spots in the leaves that spread and eventually turns the whole leaf brown and it dies and gets crispy brown. This starts at the base of the plant and works its way up. Often it will happen in the first lower few leaves and doesn't affect the whole plant and you can still harvest the flowers off of it. And then powdery mildew produces a white dust like film on the foliage and flowers, usually later in the summer, uh, usually late August into September, uh, or on older plants. That's another reason to have a succession planting put in in early August because those plants are usually don't get the powdery mildew as easy as the older plants that have been in a month or two longer. You can treat any of these with the fungicide or simply remove the plants and destroy the crop because you should have another planting coming along getting ready. This video uh, and other videos as well as cut flower catalogs and cut flower information is all posted at the ballseed.com backslash cut flowers website. Be sure to check there often for updated catalogs and additional videos.